when Kevin Durant went to the Phoenix Suns, I said that they have a good shot of winning because you have an all-time player in Kevin Durant. You have a all-time offensive player in Devin Booker. You had Chris Paul, but we kind of knew Chris Paul wasn't going to be there after that season or at the at the end of that season. DeAndre Aiden, like you had pieces. And then they got Bradley Bill. And while everyone, well, not everyone, a lot of people were singing their praise. A lot of people were saying there's a big three, which there was a big three. I don't think... I was ever one of those people that said, oh, they're they're bona fide title contenders. What I said was they're bon- it's a it is a big three and they can be absolutely lethal offensively. But I wouldn't go as far as say title locks. And let me tell you why. It all goes back to team construction team construction is the most important thing when we talk about championship caliber teams yes you have to have a star yes you have to have multiple high quality players but if you don't have a cohesive team you have no shot And on top of that, a lot of people were comparing the Phoenix Suns big threes to the Golden State Warriors big three or the Miami Heat big three. And they could not be furthest from different. The only similarity, obviously, is Golden State's big three when they had Steph Curry, Klay Thompson and and Draymond Green or when they have, I'm sorry, those three is Kevin Durant played for that team. For two years and ob- or three years and obviously won two championships. But it goes back to t- team construction. The key and the 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 thing that doesn't get talked about a lot when we talk about big threes and when we talk about championship caliber teams is everybody knows their role, right? That gets talked about a lot. You need to know your role. What doesn't get talked about a lot is what are people's roles? And people's roles, you have to do something different than somebody else. Yes, you can be great the same. You can do the same. But there has to be an element of your game that is different from somebody else. If we want to go to Golden State Warriors, right? Steph, Clay, and Dre, they all do something different in a sense. Yes, Steph and, and Clay Thompson are shooters, but Clay Thompson is a better defender. And while Draymond Green is not an, uh, an offensive weapon much at all as far as scoring the ball, his assist ability, his defensive intensity is important. That's why... I think it's important for all three to stay together and it has been important for them to stay together because if it wasn't, if one of those cogs were out, right? If one of those three were out in Golden State, it would completely affect the other two. Each person does their role differently. They may have similarities, but they do their role differently. Same as the big three when we talk about Miami, uh, LeBron James, D. D- Wade, and Chris Bosh. They all played a role, a different role that set the, that that helped with the goal, right? When you look at this Phoenix Suns team, what does Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and Bradley Bill do differently? Neither one of them are defenders to that extent, to to an extent where they can be, defense can be their calling card. Neither one of them really are assist players. Like, they can pass the ball, but neither one of them really, their mindset is pass first. 
And on top of that, what they all do well, what they what's going to get maybe all of them in the Hall of Fame is their ISO ability, is their offensive ability, is their ability to put the ball in the hole. Kevin Durant is one of the greatest, if not the greatest, offensive weapon the NBA has ever seen. Devin Booker is one of the greatest ISO players we have ever seen. When Bradley Bill is on, he is one of the greatest offensive weapons we have seen. But if there's no second win to either one of them games, how how do they how does they make the team better? I think that's why every stint for Kevin Durant outside of Golden State hasn't worked. Because when you look at the teams that have been built, yes, there were injuries that affected uh, Brooklyn. But even when they were healthy, you had three players, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, James Harden, that did a lot that did a lot of the same. Now, I do think that that could have been possibly more successful because James Harden's more of an assist person but or is a better assist player than J- Kevin Durant and, and Kyrie Irving, but still. Going into this series and seeing what we have saw all season, there should have been nobody that thought that the Phoenix Suns had a chance to, to yeah, they probably could have upset the, the Minnesota Timberwolves, but they should have had no chance to go against or to win a championship because the, t- the construction of this big three along with the construction of the team was flawed. They brought in a defensive coach and completely gutted the defense. And now, more than likely, Frank Vogel is going to be fired. When you have three players that do pretty much the same thing, you're going to hear complaints like you're hearing out of the Phoenix Suns camp now because they're saying that a lot of, you know, Kevin Durant didn't like his role and you're going to have, you know, there was a lot of stints in the game and a lot of the offense that he was standing in the quarter corner waiting for someone to do something. This is Kevin Durant we're talking about, but I'm reading that and I'm saying, what do you expect? Who do you, who do you expect to, be a defensive lockdown player. Who, Josh Okogie can't guard everyone. Who do you expect to be that player to say, I'm going to put my offense aside and I'm going to be more of a facilitator? Seeing as though Kevin Durant, Bradley Bill, or Devin Booker has never done that. Kevin Durant didn't even do that with Golden State. Steph Curry had to, had to uh, minimize his game to help the betterman of the Golden State Warriors. And obviously it got them two championships. You have three you have three players with redundant skills. Now again, that's not me poo-pooing or crapping on them. That's me saying they are great offensive weapons, but like Golden State's big three, they don't have Bradley Bill, Kevin Durant, and Devin Booker don't do enough different things to really gel. On top of that, the roster construction was terrible. Look, again, I'm not here crapping on no player, right? And every player that's in the NBA obviously deserves to be in the NBA. But I'm I'm comparing them to their NBA counterparts. There's a reason why Bo Bo wasn't getting minutes Anywhere else he was playing outside of Phoenix. I don't think there was a big revelation. There was the fact that he's just not an NBA caliber player. Maybe his mindset, maybe his worth ethic. I don't know. But the fact that that player had to get major minutes at times for this Phoenix Suns team is crazy. And again, name me the defender. I 
I said that the overlining um, theme of this episode is legacy. And we just talked about Candace Parker's legacy, how she, even though she wasn't the most popular while playing for one reason or the other, I don't know. Like people really didn't like Candace Parker that much, but they respected her game. I kind of feel she's the same. I, I kind of feel in, in a sense that Kevin Durant will go down as the Candace Parker of basketball for situations like this. No, I'm not saying that, Ke- you know, Candace Parker was hopping from team to team, but neither did Kevin Durant really. He played for four teams. But I think where Kevin Durant's biggest flaw is, is he viewed the game of basketball for lack of a better term, like it was the park. When you go to the park, when you're playing with your friends, when you have everyone lined up at the baseline and you're picking teams, obviously you're going to pick the best. You would like to pick the best players, right? When you go to a... A team that has Kevin Durant, Bradley Bill, Devin Booker. That team will dominate a Rico Hines run. That team would dominate a park run. An open gym run. But when we talk about the game, and when we when 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 we talk about the game of basketball as far as the NBA and how to win a championship, that team is extremely flawed because you have three players that do the same thing. If we're playing to thir- 10, if we're playing to 11, if we're playing to 15, that's a great team. But when you're trying to win a championship, there are some fatal flaws with that team. Everything that I said before the playoffs still stand with the Suns. I think that they can catch fire and they can be one of the deadliest offensive teams we've ever seen, seeing as though we have three players that can give you 50 on any given basis, any given night. But one thing, especially moving forward, I think it would be wrong to call this team a championship caliber team. Not because of what they have, but because of what they don't have. And honestly, they, you know what it is? It was clear as day, the contrast between the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Phoenix Suns and how they played basketball. The Minnesota Timberwolves is a team when each player knows their role. And you have players to do different things while doing this. Carl Anthony Towns is still an incredible scorer, just like Anthony Edwards, but we understand, hey, hey, Anthony Edwards is leading his ship. <laughs> Rudy Gobert has does not have an ounce of offense in him. We saw that. But he's one of the best rim protectors we've seen. Then you have Slow Mo. Then you have Mike Conley. Then you have Jaden McDaniels. That's been the meme going around. They got KD, we got Jaden McDaniels, you know? What the the Minnesota Timberwolves are building, even if they don't 
win this year, even if they don't make it past uh, the Denver Nuggets, which is going to be a tough ask, obviously. But what they're building is something special. Not only was what the Suns are building or what the Suns built was looked at to have instant success, it was still built with a flawed foundation. It wasn't built on a foundation of this is how you win a championship. It was built like we're at a park, we're playing pickup, and we just need to pick players. And if you look, the situation is even more dire because you look at the, like, their future is done for. At least immediate future. They don't have, I don't think they own a first round pick until like 2030. Or a second round pick until like 2030. And on top of that, you have three players that are making 50 million or close to it. And that's, I want to stay, let me kind of get off of Kevin Durant real quick and let me talk about Bradley Bill. As a Wizards fan, as someone that has sat through years and years of heartache from Washington, and someone that has sat through years and years of Bradley Bill's play, For Washington. This isn't vindication for me. You know. I'm not here. I don't want to see anyone not succeed. That that would be petty. But what this is. Is. Me not being shocked. When you've been playing meaningless basketball for a majority of your career, it's very hard to understand the feeling. It's very hard to understand the importance of the moment when you're now on a situation, when you're now on a squad that is playing meaningful basketball. Yes, Bradley Bill, there was two years in a row where he led the league in scoring. And Bradley Bill is an incredible player when he's on. But there, there is also a lot that comes with Bradley Bill that I don't think Suns fans, Suns ownership, the team expected. For instance, Bradley Bill does have a semi-extensive history of injury. Bradley Bill doesn't really function well when he's not the main character. And as we've seen in Washington, even if he is the main character, that doesn't necessarily mean that your team is good enough to compete. Bradley Bill had probably his worst game of his career in game four. Yet, there's not an ounce of me that's shocked because I've seen Bradley Bill at his best and I've seen him at his worst. And his worst did not come, I mean, his best did not come to Phoenix yet. And on top of that, I know the saying, which it is true, but I know the saying is positions were made for a novice to follow the game. Which is true. You know, the point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, center was made so that someone that is just coming into the sport or someone that is trying to understand the sport is able to identify with people, able to identify with positions. Well, one thing that doesn't really get talked about enough is roles and importance to roles. And what I mean by that is first option, second option, third option. Most of these NBA players, and I think one of the, and you've seen this during interviews, people talk about it in pod, on podcasts, the importance and the challenge of adapting to your role. Every role, every person's role is different. 
compared or depending on what your situation is. And on top of that, your situation, just like your role, can change constantly. For instance, Bradley Bill was the number one option in Washington majority of his career. Once John Wall started suffering injury after injury and, you know, Bradley Bill had – got elevated he was a number one that usually means the focus is on you you're the number one option you every you know most plays go through you most possessions go through you that's just how it has to be the thing about that is you there's obviously a difference between being the one guy and being the two or the second option. Because the second option, now you don't get as many shots. Now you have to depend on somebody else. Now you have to, you know, you have to take a back seat because the number one option is gives, usually gives the best team the chance to win. Then you have the third option. Third option, you get less op less plays you get less opportunities to shine you get less opportunities to shoot and you have to defer to two other players bradley bill has never and i don't think in fact bradley bill has never in his life been a third option until he got to phoenix because ain't no way in heaven or hell i'm picking bradley bill over devin booker over kevin durant well, as we saw, not only do you have to adapt to being a third option, you come in with injury situ in, uh, situ injury problems. So now it's hard for the team to adapt to you and it's hard for you to adapt to the team. What I'm, what I'm getting to is Bradley Bill should have never been on this team. And I'm not blaming Bradley Bill for why the Suns ultimately got swept. I'm blaming Bra Bradley Bill for not being able to adapt. I know it's tough, but, you, you know. Oh, man, you stayed to the end of the video. I appreciate you. If you like what you saw, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you'll never miss any content from your boy. You can also go back and watch past episodes, past clips, and don't forget that the Unpopular Podcast new episodes drop every Wednesday and Saturday. Appreciate you.